Hi, I'm Philip Eckberg, and I'd like to show you a couple of things in Xamarin Studio and how you can get started by creating your first iOS application. So here I've started Xamarin Studio, and you can immediately see that it's a familiar IDE experience. We can create new solutions by going up to File, New, and create a new solution. I can create both Android and iOS applications, and in this case, I want to create a new iPhone application. So we'll head, head over to this tab here where we can create the iOS application. And for this iPhone application, I'm going to select that I want to create a new empty project. We can call this project Demo of Xamarin. We can either debug this on our iOS device if we have one. That requires us to set up a Apple developer account. And we can also select that we want to debug this on our simulator. So I'll select that I want to debug this on the iPhone Retina. And if we just start this application by clicking the play icon here, you'll see that this is going to build the application. It's going to compile the native code. It's going to start the simulator, and then open this up for us with a debugging connected to the simulator. You can even see the application output that shows us when the application is deployed and what's going on in the application. Our application is quite empty now, so there's nothing really at all going on in this application. So let's go ahead and stop this. We can go into our app delegate.cs here and have a look at what happens inside finish launching. Finish launching has a reference to our window and then it expects us to point it to a root view controller. So we can go up here and create a new folder where we want to put all our controllers. So let's do add folder and call this controllers. We can right click and click add and add a new file. And I want this to be an iOS view controller. It all depends on the type of view we want to create in our application. So we have an iPhone table view cell here. We have an iPhone view. And if we simply create the iPhone view controller, that will also get us the controller and the nib file that we need in order for us to create our application's UI and the controller that handles all the events and such. So let's call this main view controller. And add that. Now you'll see here inside our controllers we have two files. We have the CS file and we have the nib file. The CS file simply contains our two predefined methods that we need inside our views, inside our view controllers. This controller itself inherits from UI view controller. And let's not care too much about that now. Let's instead go ahead and double click on our nib file. And what this will do is that it will open up the interface builder inside Xcode and this will let us add things to our UI. So I can go ahead here and I can create a new button on my application by simply going down here dragging out this button. I can put this wherever I want on my interface. We can also drag a label out here. Let's put that beneath the button. Let's align these up here. And then what I need to do is I need to hook up my button to be accessible from my controller. In order to do that, I need to click this little icon here that looks like a tuxedo. And this will bring up a view of our header files and our M files. If we click up here to select the header file instead, I can click the button, hold down control and drag over here in order for us to create the backend for our button. So what we're doing now is that we're exposing our button to our view controller. And we can call this my button. Let's click connect here. Now this creates a property in Objective C that we that we need in order for us to access this button. We also need to do the same for our label. So I'll drag this over here as well. I'll call this my label. Click Connect. I'll save this and then close this. Now, if I head over to my controller again, I should be able to access both my button and my label. So if we go into the, to the view did load here, we can create code here for accessing the button. So I call this my button. Now you see that we can access both my label and my button. So if I do my button here, and whenever you touch this here and release inside, we have different touch events. So we have touch 
drag inside, we have touch up inside, we have touch inside. We're going to use top inside, touch up inside. This event here lets us subscribe to this by creating a new event handler. So we can create asynchronous event handlers and we can create event handlers that we normally do by simply creating either methods or anonymous methods. So in this case here, I'll just create this anonymous method and I'm going to tell my label to set the text to clicked. If we run this application again, you'll see that this opens up in the same way as we saw before by debugging the application inside the simulator. Before we actually click the button inside our application, and before we even see this main view controller here, there's something that we forgot to do. We need to head over again to the app delegate file to tell our application that the first root view controller that we want to create and show in our application is the main view controller. So we could simply do new main view controller, start the application again, and this should show about a button and a label. Now we have both the button and the label here. So let me click the button here. That should change this, as you see, to the text that we specified. We have a predefined width though of our label here. So what happens is that we can't see all the text. And just to make sure that this works, that the debugging experience is good enough, we can set a breakpoint in here in the click event handler and then go back to the simulator, click the button, and you'll see that we can debug this here as we would expect to be able to. So all we're doing here is that we're using C Sharp to create our iOS application. In this case, I'm creating an application for the iPhone. I could just as well create an application for iPad with shared code with my iOS, with my other iOS projects. I can also introduce Android applications and Windows Phone applications, which increases the code sharing between the different platforms and lets me do a lot of powerful things and reach a larger crowd. Please stay tuned for more videos on Xamarin. And I really hope you enjoy this short video where I show you just some things that you can do in Xamarin Studio.